Boom. All right, here we are. Just hit record, Simon. Yes. Beautiful. Let's, go. Let's do it. I should probably should have asked this before I hit record. Is it Vaconis? Yeah, that works. Okay. Uh, um, Vaconis, Vaconis. Yeah. Okay. It's, uh, it's, it's probably two, three ways you can say it. None of them is wrong. None of them is wrong. That's the way I like it. And I, I like the, I like the way you're spinning. It feels like it's a, like a summer day, and we're like on a playground, and we're playing. It's it's fantastic, yeah. actually. <laughs> my long lost, my long lost Swedish friend. I, Beautiful. Yeah, I'm sitting in my my work chair, uh, just feeling the vibes. Mm-hmm. Oh, baby, we're gonna feel some some vibes through the depths on these blackened wings as we go through this odyssey. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Well, hello, hello out there. YouTube world, uh, Spotify world, uh, podcast land. Welcome to the Rock Metal Podcast. I'm your host, John Harris. Today on the Rock Metal Podcast, we have Vaconis. Vaconis. Va- There's only three ways to say yeah. it. That was two. You said yeah. it a third way. Yeah, I think it's a, a very rough Swedish way, but I can't really recall it right now. But if someone says it, I'm, I'm just like, yeah, mm-hmm. you can say it like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> very cool. And they've got a new album called Odyssey, which is going to be released on May 7th, 2021 via the Sign Records. Uh, no joke. If Valdemar is listening in, I think of Ace of Base every time I say that. <laughs> yeah. Every time I say it, it just creeps right in there. I saw the Sign <laughs> Records. And right now I'm being joined by Simon, and Simon's going to share some more information about this stellar release. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Kind of an interesting thing is it's May of 2021. So this so far is what I'll call the latest release into 2021 or whatever. Um, so I guess that kind of goes into my first question, Simon, is it? this is like a strategic plan. This is like like usual stuff. You record a record at the end of the year. You get it all mixed, mastered. You get a couple of singles going. You get label support. You release it between like March and May. In, in ready to go on the road and take over the world and tour that bad boy. Yeah. Uh, is, is, we, we actually had it done so it would have been ready for last fall. But, uh, you know, obviously, uh, Corona happened, so we couldn't do it. So we decided to uh, set things up for next year, like this year. Hopefully everything calms down and we can tour some of it. Mm-hmm. it very cool. It, it would be cool. Um, yeah, like it, we don't know what's going to happen, but like we're going to try to release some music anyway. And if it happens, it happens. Yeah. OK, so you guys could have released it in the fall, but you thought we're going to hold off a little bit longer. Yeah. See if, see if things, you know, shape up a bit. OK, now devil's advocate question for you. If it doesn't shape up, is there a plan B? Yeah, sort of. Like, we're going to release the record anyway, but we have an EP coming this fall also. Okay. So, yes. if it's not possible to tour this summer, or, you know, that cycle, and but it is possible to do it during the fall, uh, we have new material then as well. Mm-hmm. So, hopefully that works. Yeah, so the plot like, thickens. Yeah, the plot thickens, but like, even if it doesn't work and we can tour, like people are going to sit at home anyways. People are going to order albums. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it kind of sucks not to tour it, but uh, hopefully when all clears up, people are like very stoked on it anyways. Yeah. And plus, we got an EP coming. Yeah. They sit at home, they order albums, and then when they, they, they deliver it, they give you a five-hour window to deliver it. Yeah. And then when it shows up, it's the most inconvenient time. Yeah. (laughs) Beautiful. But (laughs) thankfully we're both, uh, both flexible on that one. So anybody listening in, the funny thing is we actually had to adjust our interview time a little bit because of a parcel that arrived, uh, for Simon. So that was, that was exciting. Um, yeah, that was very stupid. (laughs) Like they could have 10 minutes earlier and it would have happened. So, yeah. yeah, Yeah, exactly. We're here now. We are here now. I'm, I'm very thankful. There's no hard feelings about it because I couldn't do anything about it. So yeah, 
Thanks. Mm -hmm. Now, something, speaking of hard feelings, you mentioned that last year was a rough year. The band hasn't rehearsed since the summer. You're excited to talk about music. You're, I'm guessing, excited about this year and the potential uh, that this year can hold because now releasing the record, there's an EP, there's a, a stock standard plan in case everything goes well. Um, so I guess take us through the production of this record. And you mentioned that it was a rough year. I have no idea what you mean by it being a rough year last year. Uh, so because as far as I know, everything was great in Sweden. You guys had no restrictions. Yeah. Everything was lovely. Uh, <laughs> No sign of the new variant yet. Come on. Um, yeah, but like um, the thing is, we we didn't have any traditional lockdowns. But me and my uh, partner, we were still locked down. Like we we don't want to risk uh, like our relatives, our older relatives, uh, or someone else. Like if we got sick, yeah, we we pull through it. But maybe you you. Um, you put someone else in harm's way and we, we don't want to do that. So we had this show, like a live stream show this summer. So we kind of rehearsed for that. And that, that's, that's about it. Okay. Um, we had to do the like master mixing, uh, from three different parts of the country. Um, because we were in lockdown, like all, all of us individually. So in, in that in that sense, it's been kind of rough, like creative creatively. Um, but I think it turned out very cool, anyways. Actually, I, I think it's our best sounding album yet. Okay. Like like in, in terms of production and like the time we spent on it, like just getting everything like as best as we could. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, what did you guys? I'm very happy about the results. Yeah. What did you guys do differently that produced a better production? I think we we had uh, a, a different drummer for this record, uh, so our approach to songwriting was completely different from what we used to do with our old drummer. Like this new drummer, Peter, he is very much more involved in the songwriting. Mm -hmm. So we like. This is the first time we wrote as a cohesive three person unit. And, uh, we tried out a new studio, uh, very close to where we live. And it's got this very beautiful room, um, perfect for recording drums. Uh, so I think we got a bit of a, like, like the drums are like more, more tighter sounding than our last record. The, the symbols, they don't like zizzle and or fizzle as much. And I love that. Like they just get to breathe. That's the most important part of this, like production wise of this album, I think. Just the, the drums. Okay. The drums. Yeah. The symbol. Yeah. The symbol. Yeah. I got so annoyed by our late, last album <laughs> at the symbol. We, we couldn't get that down. <laughs> <laughs> It's something from a production standpoint, because I went to recording school and, and here we do stuff for uh, for some bands, mostly mixing and mastering. But if, if I'm needed in the studio, I can do that as well. But probably one of the first things I do looking at a, at a drummer's kit is, you know, the cymbals. Are these cymbals going to do? Are yeah. they not going to do? How many rides did the guy bring to the session? If he brought one ride cymbal, that's not enough. You need three, four ride cymbals. Well, it's, what's going to work, you know? So... And we nailed it this time, though, and I'm very happy about that. Very cool. <laughs> now, yeah. something else I see is you mentioned that it's, is that an orange TH30 that's behind you? Is that what it is? It's an orange OR50. OR50. You know what? And, I, I wrote down OR30, and it's funny because I could just cross the two then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I actually used it uh, on our album, and uh, now it's sitting in this room with uh, our uh, makeshift office since I work from home with my uh, work computer and uh, litter box for the cats. Okay, of course. That's <laughs> that's where that's yeah, where orange course. ants live is right next to the litter box yeah. for the cats. <laughs> in the third in the third room. In the, 
in the home yeah. office or the third room. I, me- I remember in the beginning you said, I'm in my third room. And I thought, that's not something yeah. I say. Like, where are you going <laughs> to the third room? Yeah, what? the third room. Yeah, the third room. What happens in the third room? I was imagining it's like a Swedish thing to say, the third room. Yeah, I actually got it from, do you know the band uh, Kruang Bin? They're no. like this uh, this uh, jam psychedelic band from uh, the U.S., from Texas, I think. They're like uh, very inspired by, uh, I think it's Thai, Thai uh, psychedelic rock from the 70s. Okay. And they have, they have this song, and like the only lyrics is, "This is the third room." Okay. <laughs> and so it's that, just very jam. Yeah, because I just looked it up in Swedish. And I don't think it's a thing. Det tredje rummet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Det tredje rummet. Beautiful. You say it better than I do. Um, sweet. So that explains quite a bit of the the guitar tone. Uh, on the record is the orange amp. And I don't know, I might call it an underrated amp for some people who think that it's not for them, but almost a perfect amp for those that think it will work. And I know that's kind of a vague statement, but. Uh, yeah. Do you like to get down on the, the nerdy guitar stuff? I do. I do like to get down on the nerdy yeah. guitar stuff, especially when cool. real amps are used because a lot of production that I'm coming across these days uh, the simulators are getting so good and the budgets are getting yeah. so small uh, that probably most of the metal or rock we've heard this last year, uh, I'll call not real. Um, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but like, I don't mind it. Um, but uh, we used, for my guitars, we used this OR50 uh, in combination with my, uh, it's a Thunderverb 200, it's called. Ooh. It's like the amp they did, like, I don't know, maybe five to ten years ago. It was like a crossbreed for guitar and bass. Uh-huh. Uh, and I played exclusively on single coils this album. So I only used my Jazzmaster and my Telecasters, uh, single okay. coils. Okay. Uh, and I, I, want, I wanted the, uh, the bass to do all of the, like, distortion. And the guitars to do, like, the... Like what do you call it? Like the the uh, jangle. The, like yeah, the jangle, the stringiness, the attack, mm-hmm. like the punch of the of the sound. Yeah. Oh, you'll get that from single coils, baby. Yeah. Yeah, you'll do. Yeah. Um, I think it's kind of unrated for for heavy music. Uh, I got very very much inspired by Baroness and okay. their their latest kind of gear transition. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think uh, we incorporated that pretty cool. Yeah, no, it makes sense. I don't think people realize how much weight the bass holds or should be holding and uh, how much more power you can get out of the guitar by not compressing it so much with so much distortion. Uh, yeah. So you basically just let the right instrument shine. And then you mentioned that the cymbals were where they needed to be. So, I mean, talk about perfection on, on record. Yeah, like we, we really try to make each instrument shine where they shine the most. Uh, like the guitar, it doesn't need a lot of bottom on the recording. But like it needs bottom, but it like it, that's not the, the section of the album where it needs to be like, oh, that's some heavy guitars. Actually, it's probably just a very heavy bass. Mm-hmm. And it just comes through in a different way that you used to. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Now. Yeah. Yeah couple of tracks we were going to chat about here are Through the Depths and Black and Wings. But my first question is going to be, take us through The Odyssey. Or is it this album, is it The Odyssey? Like the actual what, poem, no, it's poem like, or whatever? We had uh, a process prior to making it an album. We were like, oh, let's make a long-standing EP series where... We're, each EP is titled like Odyssey 1, Odyssey 2, Odyssey 3. But we made like four tracks. And then we we're like, oh, we're, we're going to need to record some more tracks and make it an album instead. Uh-huh. Uh, and it's like, I don't know why the word Odyssey fits for us. I think it's because for the first, this like, oh my God, this sounds really good. The songs are there. Um, it took us this long and this amount of time and work to get there. 
I think it's that that's why we call it Odyssey. Okay. We, we're not we, we've not been running for so long. I think this is our our fifth year as a band. But like, it really took us five years to get to, to this point where we sound this good and we could write these songs. Okay. Well, that's... So I, that's about it. Mm-hmm. Okay. It looks like somebody did keyboards on the record? A fill-in? Yeah. Somebody? Okay. Yes, Pat uh, Viberi. Uh, most notably played uh, with uh, the band Opeth uh, a few years ago. I and think I've heard uh, of them. Yeah. They're pretty famous. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they use orange amps and single coils. Oh, I do not think they do. <laughs> <laughs> I think they use uh, modelers or o- very old amps, but probably do single coils. Yeah, I guess it depends uh, on what they're playing. Yeah, I think I, I think they're very open to stuff. Uh, funny thing is that the pad he, uh, we played a show in Stockholm uh, in 2019. With uh, we opened up for uh, American band Elder, mm-hmm. and uh, Per was at the show. So he came up to me at the merch booth after our show, and was like, "Whoa, you're you're the guy." <laughs> 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 I was so starstruck yeah. <laughs> because I listened to them for like so long. You know, I I binged all of the the albums, and you know listen hours upon hours and it was like yeah good show man yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was so weird so what was it like <laughs> having him do keyboards on the record then was that an out of oh, body yeah yeah like we we have a mutual friend so he he kind of you know gave us the the contacts and uh then we just you know uh emailed back and forth like what do you think about this part yeah should i do this or should i do that and uh it just came very naturally Mm-hmm. Um, we we like laid, laid out the groundwork like yeah this is what we're imagining but like do, do what you want to do with it and uh, it came out like it did is that, was it surprising to you how uh, easy it was to get him on the record yeah yeah that, that was crazy um, I do believe he is kind of picky about who he works with like he he had already seen us play and like we know we have a per- we have a friend in common so hopefully that made it more easier to him to like yeah i, I can play keys on your album but uh, to actually have him play that was kind of mind blowing mhm okay and i dig the artwork by the way i really dig the artwork oh thank you so much uh that's a very good friend of the band uh, he's called uh, Shirre. he's uh, norwegian um, and he's been doing art for us for a couple of years now. Uh, it's I, I, I envision it as some sort of a... I love the band uh, Yes, mm-hmm. and uh, the artist Roger Dean. I kind of envision it like a, like, a part, like that kind of partnership. Yeah. If they were a Swedish band, they would have been just called Ja. Ja. <laughs> ja. <laughs> ja. Ja. They had it on. I know. <laughs> Or they could have been creative and just called themselves Hey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, so it was going to be an EP. You guys decided to turn it into an album. And that's cool because that's actually come up a few times on the show where uh, an EP was released. And it's like, I don't know, six songs or something. And just short enough that like you guys could have written like one more song and it would have been an album on Spotify or something. You know, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think. Well, I, I, that's, that's a good plan. Like have an album and then follow up with maybe tracks that uh like oh yeah we wanna we wanna work on these tracks some more and we don't wanna make a double album so that's like a, a good way to like have your full release and then maybe follow it up with a you know here's something for the hardcore fans or people to like discover us uh mm-hmm. from the get from like the start first time. Yeah. That's the way I, I see it. Yeah. Exactly. Is the EP then stuff that you did at the exact same time, same production, same recording, same everything? It's just that you felt that those songs. We have, yeah, like we have one song we recorded uh, fully from that session, and we are going back to the same studio so we can like mic things up like pretty damn close to like what we got it uh, the last time. 
So I don't think it's going to be an issue from a, from a listening standpoint. And we have some tracks we are going to uh, uh, write now uh, during this uh, spring, hopefully. Like if all of this lockdown shit comes to an end. Mm-hmm. Which I hear is like, any minute now. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Any... Like I, uh, I, I have so many riffs and songs in my head, but like, I don't want to work them out all by myself. Uh, I think we as a unit write way better than I could by myself. Right. So um, I have a couple of uh, ideas. I think they're going to go down very fast once we once we get together and play them. Okay, very exciting stuff. And then obviously, <clears throat> unless of course it sucks, we'll have you back on the show again. Uh, yeah. You know, to chat about <laughs> chat about that. Uh, That's good. Yeah, and then I can just sing some more Ace of Bass. Um, very cool stuff. Well, and then something else that can't happen too is I was chatting with a band last year who somehow, in some way, through mutual friends, came across the drum kit that ABBA used on one of their albums, and they actually were able to get a hold of it and use it on their album. So I was, when you were talking about a new drummer, I was like waiting for you to say that it was like. <laughs> abba's drum kit on on the record and, and but it didn't happen so unfortunately it wasn't was that maybe with the band hella uh i don't know why i just dropped their name um i think uh, it could be hella it was in it's in a small town somewhere that has a recording studio yeah. and mm. it like buried in the back of a closet somewhere they had this whole story i'm like wait a minute you did what like <laughs> Have a have a oh drum kit, like yeah. <laughs> okay. I, 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 I went to a guitar museum and they had the uh, Benny's star shaped guitar. So maybe if I ask Riz Nice, I can use that guitar on our next album. I think so. Same strings. Yeah, <laughs> for <the> Abba power. <laughs> <laughs> All that Abba power, maybe. Um, yeah, and then whatever. There are distorted guitars in Abba. You just gotta you gotta listen for them. So you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i like abba well yeah. i guess i have you have to right you know yeah since i'm swedish i, I kind of have to yeah you have to endorse ikea and love abba those are the rules yeah <laughs> it's kind of like being from canada people are like you like hockey right and i'm like yeah and maple syrup on everything like <laughs> yeah. you know like from uh i saw the movie elf and i think he had maple syrup on the spaghetti you wouldn't uh, argue with that would I you? would. I know that actually sounds really good for some strange reason. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> that actually sounds really good. Uh, yeah. No. We. Yeah. Maple's. A, I like maple. Maple's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and especially in French Canada, they literally put maple syrup on everything. Uh, I wouldn't be against that at all. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've been watching way too much Fargo, so I say yeah. Too yeah. much. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's funny looking. He's a funny looking guy. Yeah, it, is that, pretty, is that uh, kind of close to Canada? Minnesota. Minnesota is. Uh, the accent yeah. is different, though. The the whole like, you betcha. Oh, you betcha. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> we don't say that in Canada, but it's very no, that's super Swedish, though. <laughs> it probably is. The largest number of Swedish people outside of Sweden is in Minnesota. Yeah. Like like that, uh, like all of the nuances from the from like the, the way they talk, like uh, yeah, I recognize that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I don't know if you've ever been, but you get off the airplane, like the, the airplane in the airport in like Minneapolis, St. Paul, and look around. And it's like everybody's six foot tall and blonde. Uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> like home. Exactly. You know, what's the football team? Oh, the Vikings, of course. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah you betcha. Oh, you betcha there. <laughs> Well, don't you know? <laughs> don't you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, close for sure. For sure. Close for sure. For sure yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, I don't know uh, what else there's to talk about uh, regarding the album, but um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You betcha. Uh, well, we chatted about Through the Depths, we chatted about Black and Wings, we chatted about Odyssey, we chatted about the artwork, the production, we chatted about the OR50 that I called an OR30, looked it up on the internet while we yeah. were chatting, found out it was a TH30, found out it was actually an OR50, and then we chatted mm -hmm. about 
single coils. We chatted about fuzzy bass. We chatted about a new drummer, and I was just waiting for you to drop Easy Drummer. I don't know why. We got a new drummer. It was awesome. Easy Drummer? And like, yeah, he, <laughs> he doesn't say anything. He just does what we tell him to do. Um, oh, he hates program drumming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and chat about the plans for 2021. Basically, you guys are booking that it it's going to go back to normal any minute now, and you'll do a tour. Yeah, we're we're kind of hoping to bring it off. Yeah. Uh, I saw this uh, article about uh, I think it was uh, I, I don't know where it came from but uh, I, I'm very pro vaccine and uh, there's this group of anti-vaxxers that spread the rumor that uh, the vaccine is gonna contain this 5G controlling uh, chip and uh, they uh-huh. released a schematic of that chip uh-huh. it, uh, it's, it's real that that, uh, that the schematic was from a boss metal zone distortion pedal of course. That uh, that was very funny uh, to me. Uh, I'd love to, to inject myself with a box metal tone. Wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> it runs in my, my Swedish metal blood, <laughs> I think. Uh, yeah, the metal zone and the heavy metal, the HM2. That one is incredibly uh, sweet, even, yeah, though it's, it's, even though it's a Japanese it's, pedal. There's a particular... Yeah. Uh, Band, uh, Dismember and uh, Entombed, all of the great Swedish death mm-hmm. metal bands. Yeah. Uh, before all this hit, At the Gates came through on a big Swedish tour yeah. here in Edmonton. Uh, so everybody was there. Everybody from Sweden was there. Amana Marth was there. Uh, who oh. else was there? Arch Enemy was there. Although they're part, mm-hmm. slightly, slightly part Canadian and slightly part American now. Uh, yeah. You know, but yeah, no, everybody from everybody who's anybody from Sweden was there. Uh, in Flames, yeah. no, in Flames came through another time. They came at a different time. Um, and then, yeah, they're not Swedish, but Children of Bodom came through. And I was just thinking about that because Alexi, unfortunately, just recently passed away. But they had come through while he was still yeah. alive. And uh, yeah, so we got to the open. Yeah. Uh, well, they just came out with a new album. I think they were planning to. A lot of people were planning to. And then yeah. uh, they didn't. So I had all kinds of backstage passes that I had to give up. Uh, oh. Yeah, a lot of uh, Swedish people love Canada. So they like to come here, you know? So Yeah, um, yeah, I want to come there too. Uh, I have a friend who lives in Vancouver. Hmm. And uh, me and my girl really want to go with, with it. Uh, just, you know, see the see how, how different it is from, from Sweden. And uh, maybe go to Seattle. Check out some uh, classic grunge spots. Mm-hmm. I think that that would work. I think that'd be great. Yeah, you know. So I got to I got to look the guitar player for At the Gates of the Eye and be like HM two A, and he was just like, "Yeah, we didn't have anything else at the time." He's like, "We literally yeah. just plugged an HM two, dimed it out into a crappy PV like a little practice amp." stuck a microphone yeah. in front of it and recorded the album just so we could get it done. And now all of a sudden we're legends. He's like, he's, he's stumped by it. He doesn't get it. <laughs> he's like, that tone is not good. I'm like, I know it's not, but. <laughs> like it's, it's a very, very weird tone. Uh, I've tried it a bunch of times. I never get it to work. It, it's possible on record, but uh, live, I just can't get it. It's way too thin uh, to try it out with a band. Like it, it's never, it's just like that constant. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. We'll leave it at that uh, before we start, you know, destroying all the purists who are like, oh, it's such an amazing. No, it's not. It's terrible. But <laughs> yeah. cause Simon, I've had that conversation. There was a band once who was like trying to model their guitar tone off of like, you know, the, the early albums of like in flames and dark tranquility. And I'm like, those albums sound terrible. And they were so offended. Yeah. They were like, no, those are albums. They're they're amazing. I'm like, no, they're not. They're, they 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 no. they sound terrible. The music is good, and I get that. But let's not confuse the music with the production quality. Like, if they had an extra okay. month in the studio, then it probably would actually sound really good. But they would have taken it for sure mm-hmm. too. Yeah, like they would not turn that down. Yeah. Uh, the best the sounding album as of late must have been. The new Opus album, 
talking about like rock and metal. Like yeah. that sounds amazing to my ears. Mm. They never made it as good a sounding album. Nope. And I, 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 I only listen to the Swedish version. I think it, it gets so much better. W- yeah. 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 For sure. You, you betcha. I wonder, how, I wonder how to say you betcha in Swedish. There you go. It sounds exactly the same. Groovy. All right. Well, Simon, I believe that concludes all of my questions. You mentioned you yourself. There probably isn't much else to say about the album. Um, it's going to be released here in May. We have an EP coming up later on in the year. And yeah, I mean, I'm excited for the release. I think it's fantastic. And uh, Thank you so much. You're welcome. And I look forward to seeing your third room, the litter box, the amp. Uh, you know, it says so much. Uh, glad you, <laughs> glad you're safe. And since I don't have any other questions, unless there's anything that you wanted to uh, mention, I just wanted to thank you for coming on to the Rock Metal Podcast today. Oh, thanks for having me. No, I don't have anything to add. Uh, just very happy to be here talking to you, talking about music and stuff. Uh, makes me feel a little more normal in my world. <laughs> so I'm very happy about that. Thank you very much. 